Hey guys, Tom itself here. In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at rates of fire of guns in game. It's a tricky subject given how the rate of fire of a gun is linked to the frame rate. That's just part of the legacy of the Quake 3 Arena engine that the Call of Duty engines are based on. Rates of fire in COD are actually programmed as time between shots or fire time. The game can only fire when a frame is rendered and it won't fire the gun before the fire time is up. And so the effective rate of fire gets slowed down. Now, if that's the case, and the game runs at a fixed 60 frames per second, okay, 59.94, then there are only a handful of fire rates possible in the game, 1200, 900, 720, 600, 514, and so on. But the devs program a whole range of rates of fire into the game, and we observe in testing and in gameplay that we have effective rates of fire that aren't these. Before I go any further, I need to give a big thanks to the Den Bros, especially Mousy and Toys Me, their insight really helped me with the research and testing for this video. I'll link the most significant forum thread in the description too. I need to caution that my numbers are from my tests and gameplay on the 360, and they aren't necessarily what you'll see on other systems or even in all scenarios. Probably not on PC and certainly not on the Wii U. More on why later. With that out of the way, Rapid Fire does nothing on the Bison. It shoots at 900 rounds a minute with and without, despite being coded for 937 normally and 1102 with rapid fire. That's the rounding down the rate of fire to the frame rate that I was talking about. But it's not always quite that simple, so let me put up the chart with my tests. I've got the coded rate of fire on the x-axis, the observed rate of fire for my tests and in-game clips on the y-axis, there's the black line running through which is what we'd see if they were both equal, and then we've got the red dots on that line which are the fire rates that you'd get if you were just fixed to that 60 frames per second. Now clearly there's some rounding down and some other strange stuff going on, but we're not always dropping all the way down to the rate of fire we'd expect if we were limited to just 600, 720, 900 and so on. But I do need to caution that when it's not one of those numbers, there's quite a bit of variability there. 20 or 30 rounds per minute easily. And of course we could look at fire time instead if we wanted to. We'll take a closer look at those individual data points, some of the tests and clips in game later, but right now I want to ask, how was that even possible? We started out the video by saying that if the frame rate is fixed to 60 frames per second, we have only a handful of options in terms of what kinds of rates of fire we can get on guns. Well, this is my best guess. Call of Duty doesn't always run at 60 frames per second. I know that's a stretch, if, especially if you bought into the whole it's always at 60 hype. And going back to watch the recordings, it almost always looks like it maintains 60 frames per second. But Digital Foundry has done some work and overlaid a frame rate counter on the game, for probably for measured from in-game, and you can see it drop from 60 to 59, 58, and down to 55, maybe even 50 at points. On the 360 and the PS3 too actually, it maintains 60 frames per second fairly reliably, but not always. A big example is on Stonehaven, especially with dual render scopes, you'll start to see the frame rate go down, and it becomes visible when the frame drops, and what you see is one frame will be identical to the next one. You're not going to notice this on YouTube because YouTube cuts it from 60 all the way down to 30, but if I slow down this clip, you might be able to see where I drop a couple frames. First, when the bullet leaves the gun, and then another one right as the recoil tops out before the gun starts to recover. That was entirely for science. The fact that it was an awesome collateral is just, yeah, that just happened. Now that's great, but it still looks like I usually maintain 60 frames per second in my recordings, so what's going on there? The answer would seem to be frame buffering. The game is rendering things and then saving it for a couple milliseconds before finally sending it to the screen so that if it slows down a little bit, it can try and catch back up before the player notices. Add in that I'm not entirely sure how it calculates what it needs to do to maintain 60 frames per second. I mean, if it's rendering frames faster than it needs to, when does it know to slow down? I guess that's a really technical question, but the end result is that it doesn't always take 1 60th of a second to render a frame. And as a result, the rate of fire can do some pretty funny things. The AK-12, coded for 689 rounds per minute, about 30 shy of the 720 up to the next level, you actually see about 610 from it. The Honey Badger, coded for 800, isn't close enough to 900 and so it just comes out to an even old 720 normally. A gun being coded for a faster rate of fire often means it'll shoot faster, so it certainly means it won't shoot slower, but knowing if it will make a difference, and if so, how much, that's tricky. 
And again, there's a lot of variability there because you're relying on something random to happen. But you can usually hear when the fire rate starts to kick up a notch. Listen to this. So the closer the coded fire rate gets to the next tier of fire rates, assuming everything's fixed at 60 frames per second, the more likely you are to actually see a benefit from that increased coded rate of fire. Now that is just observed on average from unloading, well, 10 plus rounds to probably the entire magazine. If you're dealing with shorter bursts, there will obviously be more variation there. Now let's get back to talking about rapid fire, and this is where we see that the Bison rapid fire, only 1102 rounds per minute, isn't close enough to 1200 to see an improvement. However, the CBJ with rapid fire is coded for 1176, and in practice I saw about 1110 rounds per minute from it. Without rapid fire, the CBJ would normally shoot at 900 rounds per minute, so rapid fire does improve the fire rate on the CBJ. But for guns like the Vepper, and especially the K7, where the rate of fire coded is not quite 900, and normally they'll see rates of fire around 760, 810, without rapid fire respectively, then rapid fire only brings those guns up to 900. It's definitely an improvement there too, but not a whole lot, it's more just a reliability thing. And I guess this is the messiest part of it. If you have a gun with a fire rate that jumps up and down between frames, you don't know how fast it's going to fire, you don't know how much recoil it's going to get. Normally I don't compensate for recoil in Call of Duty, I'd rather burst fire, but if I want to hold down the trigger on a light machine gun sometimes, well then uh, it might make compensating for that very tricky. So there aren't really any firm conclusions about what's happening, it's just random things are happening and you're going to have to deal with it how exactly your system handles it, and again, it's going to vary by scenario, the map, the gun, if you've got a dual render scope, that's going to slow things down a fair amount. Uh, exactly how fast your gun is going to shoot, I can't tell you. I mean, I don't even feel like I can give you a general idea of how close you have to be up to the next fire rate to expect an improvement, because there's so much variation between 720 and 900 rounds per minute. It's almost like there's something else that's letting those vary even more than the uh, between 900 and 1200 rounds per minute guns. I really don't know what to say here. One interesting tool that's out there, uh, Mousy put together a spreadsheet, it's linked in the Denkirksum Forms link uh, in the description below, where you can put in a rate of fire, and it'll go through and look at all these different frame rates, and you can see at what frame rates the gun would actually fire, and you can get an idea, okay, if my frame rate dropped to 58, would that make my gun shoot faster? If my frame rate dropped to 55, and you can get an idea of how much variation in frame rate you'd need to actually see a difference in rate of fire. Well, thanks for watching. I hope it was interesting. I hope it's at least somewhat useful. I'm sorry I couldn't find a way to make it more general and easier to actually use this other than go in and record the gun shooting and see how fast it actually fires on your system and your scenario. If you're not recording, it can be really hard to figure out how fast your gun is actually shooting. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.